Hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video on XUnit and mocking using the mock library. And today we're going to look at how a callback works, which is a very useful feature of the mock library, which allows you to see what an interface has been called with. So I've got a very, very simple uh, project set up here and I'll just talk you through some of the classes and interfaces. We just have a test interface with a function called testMe, which accepts a myFit class. We have a calling class, which just injects an instance of the test interface and then calls it here in a calling a test function. And then we've just got a myFit class, which is just a sign poco class with test as a property. So in the last video, we said we can do this using something called dot verify, which we can, but we'll set up a new mocking instance first. So say you know, var mock is equal to mock is equal to a new mock of i test interface and we'll just make sure we insert this here and we can say mock dot setup t into t dot test me and this accepts a class so what we'll do here is we'll create a new fake instance of the class so our my fake class is equal to a new my fake class, oh, my fake class, and then we'll just pass in x here, and it doesn't need to return anything. Oh, sorry, pass in my fake class here. And now we've done that, we can create a new instance of my calling class, my calling class, which is equal to a new my calling class, and that will pass in the mock dot object. So now when we do calling class dot calling a test and we will pass in the my fake class, we will see first of all that everything should work and the test should pass, which makes sense because nothing's being done yet. But then we could also say, we could also do a verify on that mock. So we can say mock dot verify as we did in the last episode. And I will put a link to that above just so you know exactly what we're talking about. So if we did t dot test me and passed in the my fake class and then said times dot once, this, when we rerun it, should still pass. Just make sure it does. There we go. Now, this works perfectly, but there is an issue with this. This only works because we are using the same reference because my fake class is a reference type so it's pointing to the same location in memory if we were to suddenly change this and go to the my calling class and say well actually now you're going to pass in a string and then here we're going to create a new instance of my fake class new my fake class New my fake class, and then we passed that into here, and we'll just quickly fix the test. So we pass in a let's just pass in a random string for now. We don't care, and yeah, we'll pass that in. Why are you complaining? Oh yeah, this is my fake class. So we're passing it dot is any my fake class. And then we'll pass a uh, my fake class. Here we go. And then if we rerun this, you will see it fail. And it will fail because this is no longer what is being passed into the function, into the interface, I should say. Because this has an instance of my fake class over here. Whereas we're creating a new instance of my fake class here. We can now, fix this and we can fix this using something called a callback. And to show it works, what we'll do is we will add the parameter of test, the property of test and set that to pass to interface. So now when we pass this, our my fake class instance will have the value of whatever we pass into this. And to make it a little bit clearer in the unit test, we will call this, let's call this the musings of, of a dev. Perfect. So this obviously right now will still completely fail, 
and mock verify is no use to us anymore. But what is useful is a callback. Now, what we can do here is on our setup, we can now say that rather than ending there, we'll do a callback. Now, a callback, what will happen is when this interface is called, it'll do a callback to this little function here and run whatever code is in there. So, the callback accepts a couple of type parameters and the type parameters are whatever you're calling your interface with. So you can see here in my calling class, we're calling the interface with a type of my fake class. So we'll pass in my fake class into the callback. And then we'll pass in the argument. So we'll so call it fake class here into a new into a new object. And from here we could actually do an assert. So we could say assert dot equals and then what the expected value is, which we know is the musing of a dev. The musing of a dev. And we can pass in fake class dot test as an argument. And if we stop that and then we rerun it, you will see that the test has passed. And if we debug this, we can see what happens here. It will go into this function when the interface is being called. If I can quickly put another debug point in here. So you see we've hit this debug and we'll F5 and it goes straight into the callback and then we'll assert it. This is excellent and this is exactly what we're going to use a callback for. But there is one problem with this approach. And the problem with this approach is if I was to comment this out right now and then go back to my unit test class and rerun it, you will see that this test now passes, but it's a bad pass. And it passes, it's a bad pass because this test is now not really doing anything. Because if we go and debug it, you'll see that this breakpoint is never hit. And it's never hit because the function is never called, therefore the callback is never called. So we can fix this again, and we can fix this quite simply, and it's a nice, easy way to fix it. And what we can do is create a new object here, and we'll call it a fake class callback. And we'll set that equal to null. And then rather than doing the assert here, we'll take the assert out and bring that back down here. And what we'll do is set fake class callback equal to the fake class. And then rather than doing the assert here, we do the assert there on the fake class callback. Put this at the bottom. And if we uncomment this test interface, you will see that it now passes but it will pass calling that, then it will go into the callback, set the fake class value, and then we're always guaranteeing that our assert here is being asserted, which is really important. Now, there is one more thing we should do just to make sure that everything is not working as expected, but to make the code a little bit cleaner. And we can add another assert just before this one, where we can say assert dot not null fake class callback. And this is just a useful thing to add because now it'll still run, it'll still pass as we expect it to pass. But now if for whatever reason we decided to comment this out so it wasn't called, rather than getting a null reference exception on my unit test when it's trying to get dot test onto the callback, it will fail on the not null and you'll clearly understand the reason for what's happening that's it for this video guys thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video cheerio